Alright, this is going to be a series of tutorials to help those who know little or nothing about the basic programming language to learn a good bit about it and how to do some pretty neat things with it. There are lots and lots of flavors of basic and the version that we will be using today is free basic. It's basically just a Windows 32 version of QBasic. Um, you can get it at freebasic.net and make sure you download FBIDE with it. Um, I'm assuming that most of you know uh, what variables are if you've taken any kind of algebra or advanced math and you know how to work with them and that say x can be a variable and it can equal one, two, three, bob, it could equal anything you want it to and uh, we're going to be using quite a few of those but first off we aren't right away um, if you know absolutely nothing about basic I'm gonna try and take it from a very low level so that you all can learn and uh, so let's get started I suppose now basically the first program that any programmer learns is the hello world program uh... it's pretty simple i'm just gonna show you how to do this real quick the command uh... for in a console based uh... basic language to put something out in the console would be print now with this print command there are parameters that you have to follow like what it's going to print we had a space, quotation mark, and whatever we put inside these quotation marks is what it's going to print out. So let's say hello world and we close quotation marks so that we know that that's all that it's going to say. <coughs> now you can compile this if you want but I'm just going to hit F5 for quick run so that I don't have to do all kinds of file saving and that crap. So here, oh what? Yeah we see that the program just opened and closed. Now why is that? Because it basically just runs down through the single line says okay it does that there's nothing else to do so it closes now what we want it to do is we want it to show the uh... what it printed out so we get to see it now the command basically to wait for a user to press any key before it closes is sleep now it won't close in other situations if you add it into other things but i'll get into that later but for now, sleep keeps it from closing so that we can see what it put out. So we're going to hit F5, and if I drag this over here, you see it put out, Hello world! Hey, imagine that. Now I'm going to hit the spacebar, and it goes away, okay? So, um... And that's really all there is to that. We can, you know, let's put in here a couple more print statements. Uh, my name is Brandon. Not Brandon, Brandon and I like to program and we're gonna hit F5 and hey look at that it goes down through sits there waits for user input okay I'm done I'm gonna close that now um, the next thing we're gonna handle is user input uh, we can go ahead and get rid of this if you're you can start a new project if you want but I'm just gonna delete that because I don't need to use it. Um, the way we take user input in BASIC is with the input command. Wait, before I get to that, actually no, I'll go with this and then I'll show you that. Okay, um, the input command basically gives you a prompt, asks for something, and then takes that, takes whatever you give it and stores it in a variable. Now, the prompt that it gives you is going to go in quotations just like any print statement would. So we're going to say, what is your name? And you might ask why we don't need a quote, uh, question mark there, because it automatically puts one there if we put a semicolon here. And we're going to use the variable, um, let's say, name, but I'm going to spell it wrong so that it doesn't conflict with anything. Now, before we get ahead of ourselves real quick, something we need to do is declare this variable so that basic knows that it's being used. The way we do this is dim, which stands for dimension. Why it's it stands for dimension, I don't know. But we're going to go dim name uh, with two M's so that we uh, 
can use it. Now it's going to open. Here, let's go ahead and quick run. It's going to open. It's going to ask, what is my name? I'm going to say Brandon. It's going to close because that's really all it does right now. Um, I'm about halfway through this. I'm going to need to hurry up and get to this. Uh, so basically, what we're going to do from here is once it takes the input, we're going to print it out and then make it sleep so that we can see before it see what it printed out before it closes. Now, printing a variable is different than printing any kind of text you want to put in. When you're printing a variable, which is something that can change, blah blah blah, we're going to we don't need to put quotation marks around it so that basic knows that it's a variable that we're printing. So we're going to put N A M M E and it's going to print that and then we put sleep after it so that it sits there until we hit a key and then it'll close. So we're going to hit F5 and we see the program. What is your name? Brandon. And hmm, what? Hmm, that's odd. Okay, I think I know why it did that. Um something I might be confusing the hell out of you some of confusing the hell out of some of you right now. But we need to declare uh name as a certain variable type so that it can hold letters basically. Right now it's just declared as a variant which is I'm guessing in free basic I'm used to visual basic and free basic it'll mainly use numbers. So we're going to declare this as a string. A string is basically any string of letters, numbers, whatever. It can be anything. So now hopefully that'll fix it and we're going to do that. Hit F5 and we see what is my name? And there you go. See? Fix it. And it's going to wait for user input. We're going to hit spacebar and it's going to close. And that's pretty simple. Now, something we're else we're going to do right now. Here, let's get rid of this. Uh, because we don't need that anymore. Go ahead and look over it. Pl mess around with it if you want. But I'm going to go into something because I only got about three minutes left. Um, I'm going to write a quick calculator program. Um, feel free to pause the video, go back anytime because it might help you. Um, we're going to declare two variables. One's going to be called num1 and one's going to be called num2. They both need to be integers, which is any kind of uh, number that is not a decimal. And that's all the variables we need right now. We're going to take input and we're going to say what is the first number and we're going to use num1 as that and then we're going to take input again for what is the second number and it's going to be num2 now it's going to store these in the variables for whatever number we put in make sure it is a number and then after that, it really has nothing to do with them. So what we're going to do is we're going to add these variables together in uh, this and bring out an answer. So another way to do this is we could store the answer in another variable called answer, but I'm going to do something else real quick. Um, we're going to print num1 plus num2. And that's going to put out what num1 plus num2 equals, I'm hoping, and I don't get any problems. And we're going to sleep so that we get to see what it is. Now let's quick run real quick so I can show you this. What is the first number? Um, the first number, let's say 50. And what is the second number? Let's have 50, and it's going to add these up, and it should say 100. Hey, look, it does. And that's really all to this program. And I'm running out of time right now. So something real quick I'm going to show you is let's say we want to print the answer is we're going to put that and then to say we want to add something onto that like variables or something we're going to put a semicolon here so that it knows we're adding something some kind of variables in between and outside of the quotation marks we put this here um, we go let's say 50 and 50 and it's going to say the answer is 100 and that's pretty simple um Sorry if I'm going way too fast, but I only got 10 minutes for each part, and the next part we're going to move on to something else, a little tiny bit, something else. But anyway, I got to go.